Clutch Bot versus Nerf Salad. Captains are readying up. And our map will be Tomb of the Spider Queen this evening. Let us see what the teams go for. First ban goes to Clutch Bot. This is a very small map with a lot of gank power, gank potential. There we go, the Diablo being banned. That's a smart, very smart ban on this map. Diablo is very strong as a Roman ganker really on any map, but especially on this one where it takes just a few seconds to traverse the lanes. And of course, the KT ban. Nobody wants to deal with Kelthaus's Living Bomb <laughs> until he's probably nerfed or reworked a bit by Blizzard, which is coming in the future. And it looks like we will have a possible first pick Jaina by Clutchbot. She's always good in this map. Help clear out those spiders, collect those gems, and of course provide burst power in team fights. And it will be a first pick Jaina by Clutchbot. Let's see how Nerf Salad responds. They get two picks. There is no mages, but they might look to secure a high contest assassin of their own. Maybe a Rainer, Thrall, or Sonya. Yeah, there's the Rainer. And secondly, they may look to grab a warrior or a support up front. There's nothing they have to get right now. They're really wide open, depending on how they want to draft themselves, both teams at this point. But yeah, Johanna. Johanna is always a strong... I was thinking Murden or Johanna. She didn't say it out loud. And uh, now double pick for Clutchbot before the next set of bands. Let's see how they respond to that. They're probably going to grab maybe a Muradin or something themselves. It could be really crazy and get a Stitches, but not the best versus Johanna, actually. But uh, probably a Muradin, and maybe we'll see an Uther or a Tassadar or something like that picked up, Charism even. Or maybe they just want to go straight Assassin, worry about support later, and get a Vala or Sonya or Thrall or something to help help with Jaina. Maybe looking to combo something with Jaina. Maybe they go Zagara for Zagara Ma. Um, yeah, and there's the... Oh, Greymane. I almost mistook him for Uther for a moment. His portrait. Yep. Range range damage. Greymane's also a really nice finisher. Makes it really hard to get away when you're low on health, because most 99% of people seem to take go for the throat. His leaping ult that does a nice bit of burst damage when people are low enough. In fact, it even tells you when they're low enough with a little mark over their head on for the Greymane player. Pretty cool. So Nerf Salad probably looking to ban out it's hard to say what they might ban out here. Sagara wouldn't be a bad idea to ban. Um, or Taronda, yeah. That's true. That's actually smart. I forgot they didn't have a support yet. You don't want to deal with like Murden, Taronda, Jaina, Taronda. It's really hard. Deal with the stuns, the slows, makes for easy arrow damaging up combos. And Clutchbot, they might look to ban out a support of their own since Nerf Salad does not have one yet. Might look to get rid of the Uther or the Tassadar or the Karazim, or they'll go for the damage dealer and perhaps yep, Sonya Ban. Never a bad idea unless you already have it yourself. She's, despite her minor nerfs to W and focused attack, size of slam and focused attack, she still remains an incredibly strong bursty hero. So let's see the next two picks by Nerf Salad. They're definitely looking to secure themselves another damage dealer and most likely a support here. Thinking about the Uther. Uther's always really handy dandy. Lots of burst heal. Most people go with Divine Shield unless you have some sort of big AoE stun combo or pull combo for the Divine Storm. Like maybe a choke all or stitches or whatever. Uh, and there's the Thrall. Thrall again, always strong. With Sunder, Chain Lightning, bullying people in lanes. Help Sunder helping control team fights later, post level 10. And Clutchbot is now thinking about Lieutenant Morales. Lieutenant Morales has seen quite a bit of popularity lately, um, not just in the competitive scene, but also quick matches, hero leagues, or uses on the rise people are getting better with her <clears throat> but they will forego the support to fifth pick and instead pick up an asmodan i like this and there's the morales what a team i i really like the asmodan pick uh well, 
remains to be seen how effective it'll be for them, but Azodan's a fun hero to play, I think he's a fun hero to watch. He's probably my favorite specialist. Uh, played him a ton, being a Diablo fan, so that's really cool. So let's see what Nerf Salad wants here for their last pick. They could they could go double support with something like a Tassadar or a Karazim even. Um, or they could pick up another range damage dealer if they wanted to be a little greedy, possibly. Um, they could even go for another warrior fairly safely, maybe looking for some sort of dive power against the Tyrael. Uh, excuse me, <laughs> against the Morales and the Jaina. Tyrael might not be a bad pickup here. He could go um, what is it? Sanctification to help counter Jaina damage and stuff like that. Or Judgment helps you dive in on the Morales. Um, stitches still wouldn't be the worst idea. Oh, they want to go a counter specialist in the form of Sylvanas. Given the enemy team has an Asmodan, that's also a pretty smart play. All right, we will be getting the game started. Nice draft here for both teams. Jaina, Muradin, Greymane, Asmodan, Lieutenant Morales for Clutchbot, and Sylvanas, Thrall, Uther, Johanna, Raynor for Nerf Salad. This will be an exciting matchup on both sides. I would probably give the edge to Nerf Salad's draft just a little bit. If only because they have three melee, and Clutchpot only has one melee. And Asmodan is really tanky, so that's nice. But uh, Greyman, Morales, and Jaina are going to have to be pretty careful. The aggression from Nerf Salad's draft is quite high. Johanna, Thrall, Rainer, Uther. Not a dive power, but... Clutchbot certainly has a solid draft in their own lineup, and it always comes down to player skill and team execution at the end of the day. So we'll be finding out in just a minute in the start to see how things go for these teams. Looks like everyone has their heroes. And the game is off. We'll switch over here in just a moment. There we go. Okay. Tomb of the Spider Queen. Collect the gems, turn the gems, summon the web weavers. This is uh, this in Blackheart's Bay. There's always high contest around the objective turn in. In this case, the web spinner areas, top and bottom. Okay. And here we go. The uh, clutch bots. Make sure I get that right here. Yes. Clutchbot's Captain on Lieutenant Morales and Thrail, Jaxter37 on the Jaina, Alabaster on the Asmodan, Mohaf on the Greymane, Red Construct on the Muradin, and for Nerf Salad we have the Bizbear on Johanna, the Team Captain, Garzak on Thrall, Papa Mojo on Uther, Famous Thomas on Raynor, and Lion Me on the Sylvanas. Looks like both teams may be posturing top lane. Let's see how it goes. Asmodan going to push bottom. Meanwhile, oh, they're looking to sneak in a five-man push top on this tower with the Sylvanas to cancel the tower shots. This tower has no chance of living. Oh, 4v5 here. Oh, a nice grenade push back into the tower. That Thrall's in big trouble. He is going to be first-blooded, but nonetheless, that level one kill not worth that much XP. Still ahead in the lead a little bit because of that tower kill, but they will quickly catch up due to Asmodan trading a tower in bottom lane. <laughs> I see that a lot on these maps, especially in uh, pub games, the five-man rush, and usually everyone's too split up to respond, and you lose like both your towers and a gate before anything anyone shows up to help you out, but nice response here by, uh, by Nerf Salad.
most of the action happening middle and top here. Both teams just looking to wave clear, gather their gems, soak their lanes. Murden and Graeming possibly looking to gank. Nope. Nice. Mm, the grenades by Morales missing. This Rainer probably not going to die due to his adrenaline rush healing him right up. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the talents a moment. Trauma trigger on the Morales. Green chill on the Jaina. Master Destruction on Asmodan, Wolf Heart on the Greymane, Uther of course going for Reverberation, and Johanna Knight takes Pawn for the extra minion damage, Thrall for Chain Lightning, Uther of course conjures Pursuit in dire need of that mana regen, Rainer going for the Seasoned Marksman, and with the Wind on the Sylvanas. Rainer taking a lot of damage here, he might want to think about leaving before somebody Bursts him down and he very nearly gets away living thanks to his leap and Lieutenant Morales heal. Asmid and Thrall trading hits in bottom lane. Miss Johanna looking to gank the, the Asmodan perhaps. The Thrall route landing very well. Oh my goodness. Asmodan creeping away with one or two hit points. Thrall's chain lightning not being on cooldown to zap him or perhaps he was in fog over the gate. Four talents on both teams now. Block, of course, for the Morales. Extra Blizzard range, uh, Blizzard radius, excuse me, for Jaina. They're all going full laser build so far, taking Gluttony. Insatiable on the Grey Main for that mana. Thunderclap, of course, Thunderburn, of course, for Murden. Amplified healing on the Johanna, I like that. No laws of hope, but Uther will be able to heal her a lot more as a result. The increased range on Thrall's Wolves. Ooh, looks like we might have a confrontation here. Nope. Both teams back off a little bit. Ooh, Grameen hoping this Uther getting slowed and chased by the team. Johanna coming in with the Condemn, trying to slow and punish. Uther healing himself. Uther, you probably should have run, my friend. He kept sort of trading and hitting if he just straight up ran, he might have lived, but a nice, a nice pickup kill there by the blue team. <laughs> Greymane just saying, hey Sylvanas, I'm a scary worgen, just letting you know. Uther going that protective shield, focus attack of course on Raynor for the extra damage, and Sylvanas going for Envenom, interesting considering the amount of damage their team has between Raynor and Thrall, going a little more of a damage build here with the Envenom. That damage over time. Al and Asmodan continue to duke it out bottom lane, although Asmodan seems to be getting the better of this exchange, given he still has both towers and his fort. So, clutch spot. Oop, there's some action happening top. Oh, and down goes the Rainer. I missed that. Or just got there in time. Murden looking to bully the team out. Not really scared due to the Deton Morales heal beam. Pretty much keeping him alive over any other healer right there. Going 1v3 on low health. Usually not the best idea. But from Lieutenant Morales as your friend, almost anything is possible. Asmodan bullying out. Garzek here on the Thrall, being forced to run away, getting hit with the laser and the Tomb of the, uh, the Spider Queen's blast there as well. Doing a nice bit of damage. Clutch bot in the lead by about a full level here. <clears throat> Mostly thanks to Asmodan's soaking and the couple of pickoffs is now. 3-0 in their favor. Looking like they'll reach level 10 a good bit before their salad. Another gank possibly top. Nope. As Madan just looking to push. Possibly split push with his trait while everyone else is top. See what he does with his general of hell. They're all looking to solo a bruiser camp for himself. Of course, 
Neglected to mention the level 7 talents yet. Cleanse on the Morales. Frostbitten on the Jaina. Down minion on Asmodan for that extra minion summon damage. Wizen Duelist. Nice on the Greymane. That's a fun talent. Murden going for the double... Oh, oh. Murden, no, no, it's definitely worth trying to go for that play, just sort of missed it. Nice sort of disengage grenade there by Morales. Level 10 coming very quickly for Clutchbot. Luther going for Burden of Guilt, slow after stun, thrall in the follow through. Kahana battle momentum, ensuring her stuff will be up quicker. Oh, the Azodan again escaping with about 1 HP. This guy is an escape artist probably be commended, but level 10 now on the side of Clutch Spot. Murden just walking in, maybe a little too soon. He didn't pick his ultimate yet. Going for the avatar, go for the throat, water elemental, stim drone, Murden avataring. Asmodan going for the demonic invasion, lasers, thrall bullying out the Jaina here. Stim drone out on Greymane. Securing a takedown on the enemy Johanna. The lack of level 10 here really hurting Nerf Salad. Even so, they only lose one player there. Not too bad. Level 10 rapidly approaching for themselves. Jaina going for that water elemental, if I didn't mention it. Uther, 31 gems on this Uther. He does not want to lose those. Ooh, his friends come to help. Nice knockback grenade by Morales. Always there to disengage. Nerf Salad really wants to turn in here and prevent the same for Clutchbot. Rainer going for that Hyperion. John on the Blessed Shield. Uther getting Divine Shield. Wailing Arrow on the Sylvanas. Ooh, Greymane diving in really deep alone. He is going to get bursted down. Little misplay there on his part. Jaina. Also in big trouble, getting envenomed and taken down by the Savannas. A nice set of counter kills there. Well, oh, they actually lost three. Who else did they lose that I didn't notice? They lost the Morales. I didn't see the Morales getting taken down. Yeah, Nerf Salad's draft here showing its strength as well. They just needed that level 10. The Web Weavers are out now. They're pushing. Although, really, just in this top lane. Bottom lane, I mean, see how far back Azadan's been using his uh, General of Hell minion, bound minion, to push some lanes sneakily. It's a great talent for doing that. It can be cast globally. Nerf Salad now turning their attention middle, whereas maybe, you know, we won't see a flank from Clutch Bot. They'll take it head on. He'll mean Cocktail, Grenade, and Nerf Salad deciding to treat for now. Oh, Sazmodan is a little out of position. He is going to run into four members, Clutchbot, and be stunned, and quickly bullseyed, and all sorts of other things that end his life rather quickly. Sorry, Asmodan, no escaping for you that time. They're all looking to clear out this bottom lane. Look how far this is pushed in for ten minutes. That is crazy. Nice grenade there. Oh, that is going to spread off the gray main. Here's the Hyperion. Reverberation. Ooh, a nice Blessed Shield by Johanna into a Condemn. Murden being forced to Avatar. Johanna blinding. Uther eating a lot of Blizzard damage there, but he'll heal himself right up. Level 13 approaching for both teams. Ooh, looks like they'll just trade turn-ins. However, they need the Thrall to turn in before they could actually get in their Weavers. And Clutchbot will be the ones to take the Weavers. All, not enjoying any of that blizzard. Johanna chasing the Asmodan and the Muradin. Oh, this is going to be interesting. A blind. I already have a water elemental being used. Johanna's ultimate is down for 10 seconds. Probably going to want to wait till that's available before they really hard engage or hard defend. Asmodan right away going for that demonic invasion. Clutchbot very much wanting this fort. Oh, there's the Wailing Arrow. We see the Blessed Shield being used, and a nice Thrall Sunder will end Jaina's life, and this Muradin has no chance of escaping. Being 
cut off by the rest of their team between the Sunder and the Blessed Shield and the Wailing Arrow ensured they were not going to survive. Nerf Salad now taking the kill lead, 6-4. to four. But this bottom lane is pushing so hard because of this Asmodan and the Web Weavers. So that was actually a pretty decent trade for them. There is no mule on the side of Nerf Salad. I don't even believe they have a hero with mule. I don't think Uther can take mule. Correct me if I'm wrong. So this push damage will be permanent. That is nearly core exposed. At 12 minutes, they'll be pretty happy with that, even though they are down a couple kills. Looking to take some mercenaries. Let's see, Lieutenant Morales going that preventative care. That's interesting. I like that talent. Don't see it too often. Essentially grants imposing presence to the person being healed. Ooh, this Greymane. This Greymane. Oh, a blessed shield, but he got cleansed. Healed up. Murden disengaging. Thrall rooting the Jaina. The Blizzard. As an end, lasering the Thrall away. Jaina going icy veins. Ooh, she will be dangerous if she's allowed to live in a fight and able to get all her rotations off. Murden going for a nice double stun. Avatar, Greymane, Blizzard. Ooh, Sylvanas just getting out in time. Stindrome on the Murden. And the Wailing Arrow. And the Hyperion. Oh! Shredding the Jaina and the Greymane there. Muradin narrowly escaping with his life, thanks in part to Avatar and Lieutenant Morales. Preventive care. Or, or W. And Nerf Salad sensing an opportunity. They'll immediately go for the boss top lane. Let's check out some more talents. Asmodan, of course, on the March of Sin, being able to move while lasering on the Prowl from the Greymane. And Thunderstrike on the Muradin. I'm seeing a lot of people taking this talent recently. I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, Muradin going in, trying to steal the boss! Oh my goodness, he might actually do it! No! So close, Muradin, so close. Probably worth the effort. Oh, a nice pickoff kill on that Johanna from the Jaina Blizzard. At least they got a kill out of it. Kill for a kill. And despite the fact that Nerf Salad has the boss, Clutch Bot's Asmodan Bound Minion buffing this wave to incredible amounts. They will start to possibly take core damage if they don't go deal with this. For now, they'll be content to push middle. You mean going for that inner beast movement speed. And Muradin, of course, on the extra Thunderclap damage against single targets. But uh, we actually have level 16 now on the side of Nerf Salad. Blessed Hammer on the Johanna, that was level 13. Giant Killer, Tempest Fury on the Thrall. Shrink Ray and Hardened Focus on the Uther. Nice mix of abilities there for Uther. Rainer going for double barreled into Bullseye, so he gains a two second chain stun, basically, at this point. And of course, oh, that's nice, yep, yeah, the evasive fire on the Sylvanas, and of course the cold embrace for the damage amp. That is very scary. Sylvanas traditionally doesn't contribute too much in team fights post level 10 other than her Wailing Arrow, but when she hits that 16 and she has the cold embrace on her dagger, she gets very scary. Jaina will be looking most likely for her own Northern Exposure damage amp. Yeah, and there it is to help counter that Sylvanas. Oh, we could see a very scary gank here coming out from Nerf Salad. Don't any- oh, no Morales. Johanna, they're gonna do- oh, they know they're there. Murden, Blessed Shield. Murden jumping in alone. He is going to get shredded alone. Wailing Arrow, Sunder, Hyperion. Clutchbot will have to be a bit on the run. Poor Morales in the back here is likely going to eat it. Indeed she is. And the, <laughs> the uh, um, Water Elemental chasing down the Sylvanas actually getting the kill. At least they got a trade kill there off the Water Elemental. Despite the withering, the evasive fire, Sylvanas unable to get away. That uh, deep chill showing its strength. Lingering chill, excuse me. Jaina Morales. Well, this is getting to be a pretty interesting game. 11 to 6. The Web Weavers coming out for Nerf Salad here. Finally pushing back. It's bottom lane where they want it to be, although again, no top lane pushed in. <clears throat> Let's see here. Everyone's ultimates are up. Almost, excuse me. 
Nope, we've got about 15 seconds for a few of them. Water Elemental, Merton's Avatar, Savannah's Wailing Arrow. Both teams don't want to hard engage until they have all ultimates available, giving them full team fight power. You might see an engagement here in just a moment. With the Asmodan and the Murden ultimates not becoming available. Of course, they'll definitely be content to start things off by just clearing out this webweaver. Johanna looking for the Blessed Shield opening. There's a Wailing Arrow, and there's a Blessed Shield into Condemn. There's a Sunder, Hyperion, Shrink Ray. Oh my goodness, that poor Morales didn't stand a chance. Blown to pieces. Unable to really do anything. Ooh, the Nerf Salad will be able to keep pushing here for a little bit. Although they might consider going top or even bottom at this point to push their lanes further. Not wanting to push too heavily into the nice defended area here under the fort. Have the best idea, unless you're really confident, you can take him out. He will, however, be able to grab some Merc Camps, the Siege Bottom, their Bruiser if they want. And the Clutch Pot here, looking to clear up their lanes, regroup a bit. See what they can do to counter this heavy aggression from Nerf Salad. The bully power I predicted in the draft really starting to show its strength here as the game progresses. We head towards late game, 18 minutes in. That Thrall, Uther, Johanna, that melee, stun, aggro combo just being difficult to deal with. If you only have one warrior like the Muradin. Even as amazing a warrior as Muradin is. He's a super tank, he's mobile, he has stun, attack speed slow. Whoops. Whoops. One player left the game. That is, of course... <coughs> pardon me. <laughs> Excuse me of the hiccups. That is the Johanna. I believe I was casting these guys in another game when um, one of them got disconnected and the bot took over. Jeez, the hiccups. The bot took over, took a bunch of wrong talents, had to restart the game as it was the first few minutes. And I didn't know there was a pause function. It was my first time casting, and uh, now we do. So I'd love to get that pause off here just a few seconds after. If you were right in the middle of a team fight, I may not oh my goodness, these hiccups. I may not have paused it, but uh teams are disengaged pretty much, no real danger. An easy pause.
right, well, he's trying to reconnect. Blizzard's, uh... Oh, my goodness. Trying to get rid of these hiccups. Uh, Blizzard's an ideal reconnect system showing up. <laughs> showing up here, he'll, uh... He'll, he'll need a few minutes probably to get back. The team just being silly. Exchanging some banter here. Okay, all is bare back now on the Johanna. Both teams are very patient and had some fun banter. I may or may not have gotten rid of my hiccups in the meantime. And uh, hopefully I have. That's going to sort of ruin my casting. Clutchbot looking to just clear out these bruises pushing down middle. Nerf Salad potentially eyeing the boss. Oh, not potentially. They are straight going for it. That Sylvanas Damon Jam helping them out. This Johanna bullying, <laughs> bullying out the entire team. Oh, they know they're there. They know something's afoot. Murden again, round two. Avatar being used, Blessed Shield, Hyperion, Sunder, but the bot being secured. Murden tried to leave Yabana, he will pay for his life, but it looks like this. Johanna, nope, Johanna will get Divine Shielded. She will not go down. And Clutchbot being forced to retreat here. <laughs> A lot of gems lost on the Murden, unfortunately. I think that was around 20 or so, maybe more. It was close. He probably shouldn't have leapt in at that point, especially being the solo tank for his team. Um, Raymane also ate it. I understand the desire to take the boss, but as the solo tank for your team, solo warrior, you really have to stay with them at all times, sort of no matter what. Because once you're gone, the rest of your team's just open season. This, oh, well, with 3v5 and a boss, this very well might be GG for Clutchbot here. Jaina, yeah, that whale, <laughs> that whaling arrow securing a double kill for Nerf Salad. This is absolutely GG. No way to come back. Well played by both teams. A quick finish after the pause there. Um, great game by everyone. I liked Clutchbot's early game aggression. I believe they got the first couple kills on uh, killing the Thrall, and maybe uh, later on, I forget who exactly next, but a few people. They had a 3 or 4 0 lead early in the game. 
Uh, Asvidan kept that bottom lane, and later on top, I believe, pushed quite heavily with his bound minion trait, or general appell, minion summon, sneakily split pushing those lanes and forts. Morales had some great grenades, knocking people out of position, letting them pick them off. Greymane, of course, being that finisher, Jaina that burst damage, Jaina securing a couple kills for the team solo ultimately off the first boss kill or blizzard took out the johanna and later when they got jumped at their bruiser camp on the left side the water elemental chased the jo uh, excuse me chased the sylvanas all the way down mid lane and picked her off there there was definitely some some fun plays some great plays by uh clutchbot here ultimately nerf salad taking the day I'm trying to find my stream. What have I done with it? Oh, there it is. And, uh, but, <clears throat> as I did, as said, I leaned towards uh, Nerf Salad's drafts here with the triple melee, and it ultimately proved true. I don't think uh, Clutchbot really made too many mistakes. Uh, Murden maybe jumped it a little too far, perhaps in about two fights, but that's the problem. If you're going to have a Murden diving in, you need a secondary warrior or some sort of peeler on your team to protect the rest of them, and uh, they just didn't have that available. Whereas uh, Nerf Salad, they had the Thrall and the Druhana and the Uther to protect Sylvanas and Raynor. And Raynor, of course, being more self-sustaining than someone like Greymane between Adrenaline Rush and Bullseye. You know, we can really keep people at a distance, kite them a bit better. <clears throat> so probably came down to draft more than plays, um, more than anything. I mean, Clutchbot at level 10. Before Nerf Salad, they maintained a lane lead, an XP lead. Uh, they did well overall. I think they just needed a little bit of a stronger draft to... They needed counter-aggression for Nerf Salad. They didn't have an answer to Sunder. They didn't have an answer to Wailing Arrow. Of course, who does have an answer to Wailing Arrow, really? So I can't really say that. But, um, you know, Blessed Shield, Sunder, um, those are hard, hard aggro initiation alts. And you really need something to disengage. Um, you need something like a Zagarama, a Falstad Mighty Gust, a Tacitar Force Wall, something to just uh, Diablo Apocalypse or something, though Diablo is banned. Um, Kilthops has also banned his Gravity Lapse, Empowered is a decent counter to lifting up the three people. But uh, yeah, you really need some sort of hard disengage against that kind of heavy, heavy aggro as well. Um, but nice plays. Uh, probably my favorite, or one of my favorite plays of the game was Nerf Salad um, sneaking in bottom to the Bruiser Camp of Clutchbot and then waiting there and that whole fight happened and then Jaina got the pick off on the Sylvanas with the Water Elemental. Um, no, I didn't mention level 20 alts. I think they got them. I actually didn't notice exactly when they got them, but those didn't those didn't win them the game per se. It was it wasn't looking too good as it was that last moment wailing arrow by the Sylvana securing an additional two kills with the boss pushing in. Uh, even if those two players didn't die, there was still about ten seconds left on the res timers for the two remaining team members, uh, Muradin and Greymane. There was just no really no way to defend uh, without the boss. Just a straight five man push. Uh, they probably could have defended and not lost outright, right there, unless more of them died. But with the boss pounding on their door, on their core rather, uh, really, really no chance, sadly. Boss is really strong at that stage of the game. I didn't discuss the level 16 talents taken by Clutch Salad, other than the Northern Exposure. I'm sorry, there's a little bit much going on, but yeah, these are... Um, they're solid talents, although I'm not sure why Greymane went for Executioner. I mean, I know they have a Jaina, but he probably should have gone for something a bit different. <laughs> Actually, let me see. What is... Uh... Let's see. Greymane's other level 16 possibilities... Relentless Predator or Alpha Killer probably would have been better. Relentless Predator probably would have been really smart. Um, although that only does apply in Worgen form. You get uh, stun reduction and polymorph, etc. by 75%. And given your versus Druhana, Thrall, Uther, 
uh, triple stuns there would have been pretty smart. But he was he wasn't being um, overly aggressive with his warden form. I would say uh, Mohoff there he was playing the gray main well. You know, dealing the range damage, leaping in to try and finish people off. An executioner does apply in whatever form you're in, but it's really situational and it can work. I've seen this work wonders sometimes on certain heroes, Rainer, Vala, Greymane. Um, but it can be really unreliable because it has to be constantly relying on that slow or that stun. And probably picking a little more of a consistent talent might help you out. But uh, that's the thing with Greymane, he's such an all-in hero, he has really no defensive talents of almost any kind. Um, so a very aggro hero, um, compared to someone like Rainer, who's a little more of an all-rounder. I'm not saying that makes him better or worse, just you have to play him differently. So, overall, Clutchbot really just needed to pick a secondary warrior, because... It, if you're only picking one warrior who's going to be jumping in a lot, like Murden, you need to have a self-sustaining team otherwise who can do a little bit without you. Like Jaina, she can't do anything. She didn't take Ice Block. She went Icy Veins. So even with Ice Block, I mean, she can only live so long. Morales can't do anything by herself. Asmodan is quite tanky, um, although he probably should have gone for something like Imposing Presence at 16 over Demonic Smite, given the Rainer and Thrall on the enemy team. Um, could have helped. Um... But all, all these heroes are very non-self-sustaining, other than Asmodan a little bit, I guess. He has, you know, all gluttony on the laser, but he can be stunned out of laser. You know, he's hit by Condemn, or Uther Stun, or anything, you know, Blessed Shield, Bullseye, Wailing Arrow, and all kinds of things can cancel his laser. So that really then puts it on a five-second cooldown, and <clears throat> he has no real escape options other than Blink at level 20. So if you're going to draft a solo warrior as a as a general rule of thumb, you should probably look to craft a little more of a self-sustaining team, something which uh, Nerf Sella did regardless. Rainer, fairly self-sustaining. Thrall, fairly self-sustaining. Johanna, fairly self-sustaining, although she didn't go Laws of Hope, but she did take Amplified Healing, and of course her Iron Skin lets her escape a lot of things as well. Um, so a little, more, a little more of a balanced team there, but both teams played very well. It was a fun match, great to watch. So, we will see. Um, thanks for watching and listening. Um, the VOD will be available on my YouTube later. I'll send out the link to the captains um, when I can. That'll be up in a bit. But, uh, yeah, we'll s best of luck to both teams moving forward in the league. And you can catch me this Thursday for more casting. And on an unrelated note, uh, I should be streaming XCOM, XCOM 2 this Friday as well in the evening if anyone's interested in watching some XCOM 2 in the beginning. So thanks a lot, everyone, and see you soon.